That's all I have to say about that. The only news show that put off impeachment coverage because the treasury reports on the deficit finally came out. That's right though, today we're going back to the old impeachment well. Well, kind of. The Government Accountability Office, or the GAO as the hip youths call it, just weighed in on the Ukraine situation. Their accusation? Director of the Office of Management and Budget and regular on the show, Mick the Knife Mulvaney, violated the Impoundment Control Act of 1974. Now, I want to be very direct at the top of this episode and say, first, this is not a court ruling. The Government Accountability Office is the strictly fact-based and nonpartisan research wing of Congress. And second, this is not an indictment of the president, but rather Mick Mulvaney. It basically says, come on Mick, when the president asks you to do something illegal, it's your job to not do it. My goal today is to see what a group of strictly fact-based nonpartisan investigators have to say about holding back aid to the Ukraine. With that, let's get into it. A momentous report in that it confirms this nonpartisan watchdog, the Government Accountability Office, which reports to Congress, um, has said that the president and the Trump administration violated federal law in its withholding of Ukraine aid. And this is very significant because this is precisely the issue for which the president is being impeached. Oh, so now you guys are nice and intrigued. Let's get into the guts of this finding. First, the problem. Faithful execution of the law does not permit the president to substitute his own policy priorities for those that Congress has enacted into law. OMB withheld funds for a policy reason which is not permitted under the Impoundment Control Act. The withholding was not a programmatic delay, therefore we conclude that the OMB violated the ICA. Well, they sound confident, but what the heck does any of that mean? The accusation is basically Congress designated money to go towards a specific cause and the Office of Management and Budget said, I get that you have the power of the purse, but the executive branch has our own idea about what policy goals should get funded, so yoink. The Impoundment Control Act is pretty complicated, but at its most basic it says that in order to withhold money that has been designated by Congress for a cause. Well, you're going to need congressional approval. So let's head back to the beginning to figure out exactly what happened. This all started on September 28, 2018, when Trump signed into law an appropriations bill that included an easy to overlook line item that he would soon regret making into law. For the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative, $250 million is hereby appropriated to remain available until September 30th, 2018. Just like that, the President and Congress had approved this bill. To beat a dead horse, that meant that Ukraine had access to $250 million in aid from September 28th, 2018 until September 30th, 2019. Now this is where things get a little tricky because my yoink sound effect at the top of the episode was a little bit of an overstatement. It was more of a thanks for the money, we'll get around to handing it out eventually. On July 25th, the Office of Management and Budget released this incredibly dense short message that I'm going to just translate it into English for all of you. Any money that Congress gave us for the defense of the Ukraine that we haven't yet spent or budgeted won't be available for distribution until August 5th. We're trying to figure out if there's a better way to distribute those remaining funds. We're talking to the Department of Defense and they say that this small pause in releasing funds won't affect our mission in the Ukraine. I mean, it was only 11 days. Chill out everyone. Unfortunately, then August 5th came around and the Office of Management and Budget said, Oh geez, we're still crunching those numbers guys, we're going to need to delay it again, and released the exact same statement except the new fund release date was August 15th. This better be some efficient spending, defense officials grumbled, but nobody really cared. I mean, it was only a 10 day delay after all. To save us some time, we saw the same message from the Office of Management and Budget pushing back the deadline on August 20th, 27th, 31st, and then September 5th, 
sixth, and tenth. Curiously, those later messages removed the second part about talking to the Department of Defense about how the small pause in funding wouldn't affect operations in the Ukraine. I'm guessing some of the people were starting to get impatient with all this number crunching and wanted the funding to finally be released. Now this brings us to September 12th, when both parties in Congress looked at the Office of Management and Budget and all asked, what the hell are you guys doing over there? Withholding this allocated Ukrainian aid for months? You know what? It also happened to be the day that the Office of Management and Budget finally cracked the code and optimized those numbers perfectly, so the aid was released. What a coincidence. So that's what happened. Now to the question that the Government Accountability Office was trying to answer. Whether the Office of Management and Budget had the right to withhold those funds for even that initial 11 day period back in late July. Their argument is simple, an Appropriations Act is a law like any other, therefore unless Congress has enacted a law providing otherwise, the President must take care to ensure that appropriations are prudently obligated during their period of availability. The logic here would be that, yes, you can still research how to better spend the money, but in the interim you can't cut off all the money if Congress has appropriated it in an appropriations bill, and then you yourself signed it. Of course, nothing can be that simple on this show because if you notify Congress with a special message listing why you're cutting off the funds and how much money you're cutting off, well, you're good to go. Unfortunately, no such special message was sent. The messages I read you announcing the delays were footnotes in an appropriations notice sent to the DoD. So yeah, people were literally not getting the message until the DoD started grumbling. So what's the executive branch's defense of this? Simple, they weren't delaying the funds, illegal. They were instead delaying the implementation of the program, totally legal. I mean, this is the federal government we're talking about here. Expect delays. The Office of Management and Budget asserts that its actions are not subject to the ICA because they constitute a programmatic delay. Now this is where things start getting pretty murky because when you delay a program, but that program is giving money, are you not delaying giving money? Turns out there might be more of a distinction to be made. The argument here was that certain parts of funding Ukraine's defense forces might not jive with the president's foreign policy goals, so they were rejigging the program for compliance purposes. Hence, a programmatic delay, not a delay related to withholding money. We're just crunching the numbers here. The Office of Management and Budget argues that because reviews for compliance with statutory conditions and congressional mandates are considered programmatic, so too should be reviews undertaken to ensure compliance with presidential policy prerogatives. Now, I'm not sure what presidential policy prerogatives wouldn't jive with defending the Ukraine against Russian aggression, but it's not my place to speculate. Unfortunately, there are a few circumstances surrounding this specific situation that should make this a little harder to argue. First, at the time the OMB issued their first appropriation footnote withholding the Ukrainian Security Assistance Initiative funds, DoD had already produced a plan for expanding the funds. DoD had decided on the items it planned to purchase and had provided the information to Congress on May 23, 2019. So, okay, that's raising more red flags than a Soviet invasion. The Department of Defense had submitted a budget and knew what the money was going to go towards, but the Office of Management and Budget was saying, okay, hold your horses everybody, we need to work out our own numbers here. Really see if this congressionally approved and funded program that the DoD has allocated jives with the President's policies, and tweak it until it does. Call us back in two months when Congress takes notice of what we're doing and forces us to release those funds. It was especially odd considering that the program had already been running for quite some time, only to abruptly stop in mid-July for a program update that took forever to implement. 
Benefit of the doubt? Maybe Mulvaney kept clicking remind me later on program updates. Now there's also a larger, more mundane issue of what even qualifies as a program delay. Programmatic delays occur when an agency is taking necessary steps to implement a program. But because of factors external to that program, funds temporarily go unobligated. Now this presumes, of course, that the agency is making a reasonable effort to obligate those funds. Here there was no external factor causing an unavoidable delay. Rather, the Office of Management and Budget, on its own volition, explicitly barred the Department of Defense from obligating amounts. So that's exactly what happened with the frozen Ukrainian aid, and the legal arguments going back and forth as to whether any of this was illegal. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing group of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe because my New Year's resolution is to get a thousand of you by next year. And I'm at 902 as of the posting of this video, so I'm so close I can taste it. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.